setting up the coral quarantine. How many months has it been? Three months? Four months? That I've been talking about setting this thing up? I've been wanting to record the process. You know, I need all the YouTube video ideas that I can get. But every time I sat down and got ready to record this video, I don't, I don't know. I, I just really do not want to record this video. I don't want to record this video. In fact, I don't even know if I actually want to keep a coral quarantine tank at all. I came really close to recording this video a week or so ago and uh, sat down just like I am now and you know, had my all my equipment laid out here. I was ready to record. And um, while I was setting everything up, I put on a few videos about other people's coral quarantine processes and tanks and wow um microscopes like really I, here i was trying to set up a coral quarantine and thinking that having a coral sit in that thing for two to three months was excessive enough a microscope multiple frag plugs okay so like they'll remove them which i was going to do anyway but then reattach new frag plugs and then remove those new frag plugs like three or four times. And that's like after doing this microscope thing. I lost count about how many times dipped these corals and inspected these corals and how many products and techniques these, like what? My little setup here? Is it even gonna, is it even gonna do anything? And I mean, I, I'm not even like going into the fact that, you know, some of y'all actually have like multiple tanks for multiple stages. Y'all are really doing the most. So I realized, wow, my little setup here, is it gonna do anything more than the standard dip, remove, frag, plug, inspect, and place is gonna do? Only time could tell. I'm watching these videos and they're talking about how, you know, you gotta, you gotta quarantine your cleanup crew. And I'm like, quarantine the cleanup crew? I didn't do that. Wow. I didn't quarantine my cleanup crew. Like, what was I thinking? I mean, now, what is this thing good for? Who knows what those darn snails brought in? I could have bubble algae. Like I could just wake up to a total infestation tomorrow. At this point, for what? I mean, for what is this cruelty? <laughs> what is this thing? useful for it. Obviously coral quarantines are fantastic practice, but this is really testing my patience, y'all. I mean, I, I need to look into a microscope. <laughs> and as you can see, this debate over whether I should or should not start the coral quarantine is evidenced in the lack of progression of the 220 reef tank. Gosh, at this point, it's embarrassing. I don't even know why I record YouTube videos because I have nothing to document. What is this? This is still empty. <laughs> I don't even want to recall how long it's been since I set up this tank, so let's not even go there. We did get some new additions. Okay, we got some new additions here. Look at these little names, yo. Aren't they amazing? Oh, I love them. Well, love and hate. Uh, so these are actually my first anemones I've ever owned. Rock flower anemones, my first ever. And you know, I've always wanted to keep anemones. You know, it's definitely been a long-term goal of mine since starting this hobby. With this new 220 gallon bill, anemones were definitely a part of the larger plan. There's some hesitation. Having only dealt with tiny little itty bitty tanks like the 40 gallon, which is actually my biggest tank up to date before this monstrosity here, 40 gallons. So I've never had the space to keep anemones. The fact that they move around on their own accord is definitely a bit frightening to me. How do you control, uh, you know, a, a little animal that just does what it pleases and you really can't stop it and it just annihilates everything in its way. Everybody has always said that rock flower anemones I should look into because they don't move at all. They hardly move at all. So I heard never ever even ha handled, even touched an anemone enemy in my life up to this point. Really had no expectations walking into an enemy keeping what they're like to own. I, I kind of assume that they would be like similar to like mushrooms or something that do, I guess, move based on their own accord, but they're not that movie. You know what I mean? They're still, you know, corals. <laughs> Definitely love the look of rock flower anemones. I think they're beautiful, brightly colored. And the fact that they don't move 
selling point to me. Once I went to Reefa Palooza Orlando a few weeks ago and I saw Trash Panda, <laughs> can't even say that name seriously, Trash Panda Rock Flyer and Enemies, which he is definitely known for. They are beautiful. Once I saw these Rock Flyer and Enemies, I was easily swayed. You know, Rock Flyer Nems don't really carry any pests, you know, because I'm having this quarantine kind of back and forth. I was like, okay. You know, I'm I'm definitely interested now. I ended up leaving with six of these beauties. They're so gorgeous. I, yes, very beautiful. I had them shipped to me and when they arrived, I just unbagged them as as you do. Y'all are gonna laugh at me for, for even admitting to this, but they move so much. It's the eeriest thing I've ever experienced. If you are familiar with holding rock flower and enemies, you know what I'm talking about and you're probably used to it so you don't even think anything of it, but I'm speaking from somebody who's never ever handled any kind of anemone in their life. That was just weird. Three days, me and these nems battled it out. Sat with every nemony. Nemony made sure they didn't move each individually. And then when I was done with them, they would start moving. It, you know there's no flow in that tank that's moving them. 30 minutes, they've all gone in places that they shouldn't, underneath the rock, upside down, on top of each other. It's not acceptable locations. Tumble weeded in my hand. Stay put for like a few hours. I would turn on the power head and phew. Yeah, no, tumbleweeds all over again. Owning your first anemone is definitely uh, an experience. I did not know <laughs> that they like to be anchored to something, which probably explains our battle back and forth there for days. <laughs> Come to think of it, I'm actually not that crazy about the idea of essentially having every single coral that enters that tank to be 100% pest free with no doubt. It kind of takes away from what makes this hobby so special to me. Okay, so hear me out before you're like this girl. So to me, what makes reefing enjoyable, and this is definitely different than everybody else, surely. I mean, everybody has their own definition of what makes this hobby enjoyable for them. But for me personally, I take my fun out of the journey of a reef tank more than the result because I'm crazy and I personally don't enjoy sitting on the couch and watching my aquariums. Relish in the stress and ugly stage and watching the tank come to life. And I feel for some strange reason that making sure that every single coral in there without no doubt has no pests just makes the tank feel kind of sterile. So essentially all that that's left for you is to sit and watch the corals grow. And then what? I know I'm really weird in that mindset, but there's something about the uncertainty that everything can go wrong that that makes this hobby like fun to me. Obviously want issues to happen to my tank. I don't want pests. I don't want algaes. Do not get me wrong. <sighs> How do I put this? It reminds me of this episode of The Twilight Zone, which was my favorite TV show. So in this episode, there's this guy, right? That's it, I'm in heaven, right? And you, you're my guardian angel, something like that? Oh, something like that, yes. Anything it's about time. I want, huh? Eh? Hey, three blasts. <laughs> <laughs> three blasts. <laughs> something wrong? No, no, nothing's wrong. Everything is just... Peaching, you fats, I'm bored, bored. Every, every, everything is great here, you see, really, really great. It's just, it don't mean anything if it's all set up in advance. I don't belong in heaven. I want to go to the other place. Heaven? <laughs> Whatever gave you the idea you were in heaven, Mr. Valentine. This is the other place. <laughs> It's nice to have some variety, some uncertainty, I guess. This connection probably doesn't make any sense, but to me, it's almost like everything goes right every single time. What's the fun? Obviously, I don't wish bad pests and algaes upon myself, but I think like knowing that there's a slight possibility kind of keeps you on your toes. And if you do have some kind of pest or nuisance algae, there's so much joy in overcoming one of those issues. Thinking that, man, I'm never gonna get rid of this pest. I'm never gonna get rid of this algae. And then you finally do just the best feeling. I just think it's all about the journey. I really do. I think it's about the journey, not the destination. Yeah, 
I, I definitely have a weird take on and what makes it enjoyable for me. I know you're probably thinking, I'm crazy, which I am. I just like being on my toes. I guess. Don't think I would understand as much about reefing if it were not for all of those issues I've gone through in the past. I mean, I know that I will definitely be dipping my corals. I will definitely be cutting off the frag plug of each and every coral. And I'm definitely going to do some thorough inspection. Maybe not with a microscope, maybe with one. Probably some kind of observation tank kind of deal. So let me know in the comments what your favorite type of microscope is. See, this is exactly what I was talking about. Anemones have a mind of their own. They do what they want when they want. And 90% of the time, it's really destructive. Anemones are not really creatures that can be trusted. And I both admire them and fear them. And to clarify this, I actually meant using the trident to gauge how your parameters are doing. Roughly speaking, I seek to avoid automated equipment at all costs after the doser incident. But having an estimate of parameters status is better than no status, I guess, maybe. And yeah, I definitely dread the day that I finally have to set up that Apex once and for all. You know, if equipment junkies complain about the setup process of an Apex, what what's gonna happen with me setting that thing up? Probably won't detect anything more than my current controller system does now.